So uh, a little bit about myself. I'm a born and bred Cantabrian, city boy. Um, so uh, I've done a lot of work in the rural rural environment throughout my career. Um, but uh, hopefully it'll uh, hopefully that'll sort of come through through our presentation. I, I wanted to start uh, in three parts. Talk a little bit about our story with the National Telehealth Service. Uh, what is um, the service and and how we connect in with rural communities. Uh, We've, there's been a couple of presentations this morning about digital disruption. Uh, for us, um, the amount of digital devices that are out there that have all been condensed into the iPhone, um, no one has a torch anymore. Um, you know, all the stuff that you sort of have is within your pocket. Um, and what that means within a health environment is you've got doctors that, that have Google glasses that can look at a patient and see what the, the presenting situations are. You, you can look at the different sort of devices, monitoring devices that go through the body. You've got toothbrushes that, that monitor um, how much you, 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 you're brushing your teeth. Um, there's a whole bunch of technology that sits within orthotics. Um, if you've got one of those fancy scales and you're holding a dinner party, all your guests can go into the bathroom, have a look at this fancy little wee scale, jump on it, and all of a sudden you get an instant message on your cell phone telling you how heavy your guest is that's currently standing in your bathroom. Um, and then of course there's various Skype your doctor type services throughout the world. What telehealth is in New Zealand is, is it's a digital enabler. It's not out there to disrupt the health system. It's 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 M health, E health, virtual health. We're not a. It's about health outside the four walls of a of a health facility. We are not out there to. We're, we're there to add value and add capacity to the system, and we're not a home care organisation. We're we're about connection. We're about partnerships. Um, we're about we've we've built this technology platform that helps connect New Zealanders to appropriate healthcare advice. So there was a um, pretty rough journey for us, two years of procurement with Ministry of Health and ACC. Um, for those of you who don't know our journey, we had 15 weeks to build the National Telehealth Service, um, which, which created bringing together seven different organisations, seven different cultures, connecting everybody, um, understanding what works for everyone, cross-pollinating, um, 300 staff, 90 of which work from home, a considerable amount of training, a lot of technology infrastructure that we had to put in place. Um, uh, three contact centres, Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch, and uh, New Zealanders didn't know that it happened. Um, that was a deliberate attempt. We wanted to fly under the radar and all of a sudden people just realised, uh, um, wow, this is awesome uh, and, and now we're um, now, now talking about our story uh, 18 months into, into uh, our, our service. Uh, we couldn't have done it without, without our partners. Partnerships are incredibly important to us, and whether it comes from our industry partners, our sector partners, our government partners, um, and having the service user at the service user or the patient at the complete centre of this their experience, um, and that enables us to do what we do. So uh, our we've been around for years, many years. Uh, we answer. GPs, um, so um, phones after hours across 600 practices nationally, a lot of them in the rural environment, and it's our connection with primary care throughout New Zealand that helped position us to win this contract. And then the incorporation and bringing together of all of these services. To, so to deliver this service, we work across seven different digital channels and have six different clinical teams. So you've got the registered nurse type services like Healthline, and they work to support services like um, the, the Overflow for Immunisation Advisory Council, sorry, centre. Uh, we've, got, we, we've got the National Poison Centre out of Dunedin, and then you've got the mental health and addiction type services, which we're, we're noticing a considerable amount of opportunity with uh, in terms of supporting New Zealanders. So you've got the, the National Depression Initiative, that's uh, the John Kerwin piece of work that many of you will be able to relate, relate to. Uh, which, and then you've got Quitline, New Zealand's most well-known uh, helpline, the gambling helpline. We do a lot of work with uh, our partners at St John and Wellington Free and providing secondary triage service for those people who ring 111 and uh, for a stub toe or something like that, and one of our nurses ring them back and, and look at appropriate other pathways for that, that person. I've, I've literally just glazed over our services, um, and the handout talks a little bit more about our individual services, but I think I want, I, I want to focus more about um, how, we, how we use the technology and how we connect with, with New Zealanders. 
Uh, our service res our service resilience. We've got four, as I said, now four uh, contact centres throughout New Zealand. We're a virtual contact centre, but we're spread across multiple different locations. Um, we have 80 work from home staff. So when there's a listeria outbreak or, or Pukekohe have a dental water issue um, in terms of water contamination, we've got the ability to send a text message to our work from home staff to say, do you want to do a three hour shift at, uh, at six o'clock just after the six o'clock news, um, which helps us build our capacity within our organisation to cope with those peak demands and, and provide New Zealanders with the advice that they need. So in terms of Healthline, you could ring Healthline and it could be answered in any one of 84 different communities throughout New Zealand and you won't know whether it's answered in Auckland or Dunedin or, or Hokitika or, or Hamna. Um, I, I put this slide up here to really demonstrate how technology enables us to deliver that service, how it delivers um, a level of capability to scale up, to, to manage peaks. And, and also it's a great way for, for nurses who live in, in these towns to be able to have um, a, a really awesome job that works around their lifestyle and, and get paid well for it. What it means for New Zealanders or Kiwis, so anyone in New Zealand at a particular point in time, is that we've had uh, more than one million contacts with New Zealanders since we went live uh, across the seven different digital channels. That's phone, t uh, SMS, text, fax, uh, email, web chat, blogs, and social media. That's one every minute from uh, for over 400,000 individual users. So there's a lot of people that contact us more than once. A lot of people contact us on more than one line. That's 1,600 contacts a day across those different digital channels. And in terms of the size of the different operations, so Healthline is our biggest um, service, the, the nurse-based tele-triage, followed by Quitline and then the other mental health and addiction services. And um, something that we're noticing more and more as we develop our other digital pathways is the shift that we're noticing around people not just accessing phone but looking at text messaging, the, the anonymous uh, text services, the, the, the Facebook, the, the web chat, um, particularly in Māori and Pacific uh, populations, they more often uh, will reach out via those pathways uh, more and more. Any new services now that we're developing with, with various um, partners, uh, we're always putting SMS and, um, and web chat uh, into, into those discussions because it reaches more people. We have shifted the way that we work with our um, with with, our, with with Kiwis, rather than building a, a structure that is looking at our organisational goals, our strategic vision, and then wrapping out how we're going to connect with New Zealanders. Let's talk New Zealanders. Let's talk what their needs are. Let's talk about their experiences, and then wrap the systems around them. What that looks like is is this funnel, and we we use this as a schematic to show how New Zealanders seek their healthcare advice. At the biggest end, there's media media articles, um, TV ads, big big news campaigns. People might see that and jump online, do a bit of a Google, might have a look at um, some self-assessments. Um, they might uh, download a workbook. Then they might jump on um, some sort of online interaction. They want to, they've, they've found something, they want to know a little bit more about it. And um, they might chat, they might email, they might text. Uh, and then they want to go further down into the funnel and they might want a personal interaction. So they pick up the phone and they ring someone. And then at the very sharp end is, is actually sitting down face to face with someone and talking to them. We don't deal in the face to face and we're not going to get into the face to face and we don't do the big media but we sort of play a role in that middle part of that of that funnel. And, and it, it's not a linear process, it's just people decide to jump in at different parts and, and, and it's our role to, we see our role in terms of connecting uh, that space in, in the middle so that New Zealanders can access the care that they need at the right time. Some uh, examples in terms of some of the stuff that we've done since we've built our digital response team uh, uh, in November last year is that we've got an internal capacity now to be able to harness social media um, beyond just health advice, but actually pushing information out. So when the November 14th last year, we had 150% increase in volumes, 
um, and we took the Canterbury support line, which we run for the recovery aspects of, of the recovery in Christchurch, and we made it a national line. We, 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 sh we put um, uh, measures in place so that it was available uh, nationally, a lot of pick up in Wellington. We also had a Twitter handle and we did some Facebook posts, and we, in six hours, pulled together um, a, a new campaign, made it live. We got Peter Elliott to front the, the guy who does the civil defence ads, um, to, to front a new ad on the radio and with our partnerships with Spark we sent text messages to North Cantabrians saying if you want, uh, it's okay to ask for help, if you want to talk ring 0800 777 846 um, Again during health, we've just come off the back of a Healthline promotion, uh, promoting Healthline to New Zealanders, don't ask Dr. Dr. Google, ring, ring a Healthline nurse 90% um, of the feedback we got was great, 10 percent of it wasn't. We sent out an apology letter, and the apology letter got 30 to 40,000 hits um, and was read more than the actual internet, uh, original um, post. All, all really positive, positive feedback. Um, and we're continue, continuously learning in this space. Uh, for 200 dollars, we were able to do a, um, a social media campaign around the Christchurch fires, geofence to people in Canterbury to be able to if this, if they're feeling like they're having smoke-like uh, in inhalation respiratory issues, contact your GP or, or, or ring Healthline. And uh, for $200, we reached 36,000 people. Uh, we're harnessing social media again and multi-channels with Quitline and um, connecting, connecting uh, particularly in January where the New Year's resolutions come out and, and tobacco prices go up. Um, we had our busiest day in 4th of January where we had 218 people enrol with Quitline. And then events as well. So connecting with Te Matatini priority population events, um, golden shares, that sort of thing, um, putting in Facebook uh, locations, supporting the event, but pointing them back to our services and, 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 build, and connecting our, our reach and connection within social media. So... Um, that's, that's a lot of the work that we've been doing and what I thought I'd do now is just connect it back into a rural environment. So when I've been talking, I've been talking about both rural and urban. Um, we don't, regardless of where the call comes from or the text message comes from, we don't differentiate between where, where that community is. But at the end of a triage, we are still trying to figure out how do we connect them back into those local services. Um, and, and some of the things that we've been able to do with the technology that we've developed and, and the people that we've got on board now is, is bring in some new services. So with Ministry of Social Development, we've started an employer advice line. So any employer who has a staff member with mental health, physical health or disability related challenges in their staff, they can ring that and talk to a registered nurse, talk through um, some challenges and some ideas. So some of the things that we've had is um, someone's returned from surgery, they've got light duties and how does an employer support that individual? Some of the other things is uh, someone who has declared that they've got hep C and what, do the, what does the employer need to do to, to work with that person in the workplace. Um, the Canterbury support line, which I've talked about, the psychosocial support that we provide uh, in, in that space and the work that we're doing now in North Canterbury and Kaikoura, which uh, in the last couple of weeks we're starting to connect with those local coordinators and provide a, a front door in to people who, who just don't know where to go to for help. Um, the virtual medical reception services, so in four, so what, what that is, is is if you live in South Westland and you ring your local medical centre, uh, your phone will be answered by someone who doesn't live in that community and they, they take they, they act as a virtual receptionist. Um, we, we were, it was so important for us to get this service right that we that our, our operational manager was so focused on making sure she understood the environment that uh, her and I drove South Westland. Uh, you know, she jumped out of, out of the Auckland office and, and, and we drove the four hour drive down that part of the world and, and I vividly remember the challenges that she just she, it really just brought home to her the operational challenges that she was going to have in terms of connecting with the prime nurses that you know making sure that the appointments are there but then they get called out for a prime call and all of a sudden two minutes out of Fotoroa they don't have cell phone coverage and they can't ring us to let them let us know that the patient that's about to see them um, is sitting in their waiting room and we don't know where they've gone so um, uh, 
we we've talked about after hours nurse triage or I, i've talked about nurse after hours nurse triage um and in north canterbury we run virtual brief intervention counseling for people uh in that community who are struggling post earthquakes and we've talked about our ability to respond to health alerts so um connecting with rural communities we 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 do our best to try and understand what's happening in a rural community each week. We ring the practices. We understand what we try and understand what doctor is on call. We we have um, we do our best to try and under, to, to document the systems, to have the the systems in place, the people in place, so that we know how to connect people with the right care. And that changes whether you're in Mochawaka, South Westland, or North Canterbury, um, because. Uh, while you can go through a nurse triage, it's, uh, the outcome and how you connect with people is different across those different communities. We're committed to understanding the, the nuances across those different rural communities. And, and, and I, I shared the example of us driving South Westland to, to demonstrate that. Um, and, and the workarounds that we have to put in place um, to, to overcome challenges when the, the connectivity isn't there or the, or the ability to uh, for New Zealanders to access uh, some of the resources that are available in other communities. So um, in closing, 15 minutes ahead of schedule, I talked really fast, didn't I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Technology is a great enabler uh, for us in providing virtual care to New Zealanders across uh, both urban and rural communities. We are committed to rural communities and and supporting their local health systems and we still have workarounds in place to support those communities where technology isn't able to deliver those services that that we want to be able to do.